this show is on the air. Sully, Costa, and not the day for the Quattro. We have Dose of the Quattro. Right. But it's the Aquanels, ladies and gentlemen. Bam! Did you guys ever see, um, did you guys ever see Knight's Tale? Did you ever see Knight's Tale? You know, you know Knight's oh. Tale the movie? No, I need to. Oh, part? it's about like this, um, uh, who's the kid who offed himself? Um, oh, Leif, uh, Leif, Le no, Leif, Leif Garrett, no, Leif Garrett, but the other guy. Uh, Heath Gra Ledger. Graham Ledger. Heath Ledger. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Heath Ledger was a, is, was a, <laughs> was a handsome actor. Oh, yeah. And it was about jousting tournament, right? Yeah. And they, um, <laughs> and, and the whole idea there was that, um, they were going to uh, joust their way through uh, this movie and make a ton of money. And the funny part was the background soundtrack was not, um, you know, lutes and uh, you know, like you see in a Renaissance fair, right, right. which I like. I know you enjoy, Mike. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it was it was all like go gos and B 52s and Ramones in the background. It was fantastic. Nice. Yeah. yeah, you guys are don't play Kate. <laughs> okay, can I tell you this? I often say that Mike Costa is a taco shy of a combination plate yep. because of his weight. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And I can tell you, we've had a number of people who have uh, claimed to have invented the fish taco. By the way, if you're a guy living in New Jersey, hey, I'm going to give you some lunch. It's called a fish taco. Like, how do you think the fish taco goes over like in, at Rutgers? People think it's a, it's a, a trout in a tortilla. Yeah. That's what they think a fish taco is. By the way, is. trout in a tortilla is my gang. Yeah. <laughs> by the way. I, but I want to say, so, but I will tell you, I have, um, here in San Diego, California, you, you may be watching us in Texas or New York or, or listening to us in, um, what's one of those uh, countries? Mississippi? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, country. The Middle East. Sorry. Okay. Um, there too. But here in San Diego, it's kind of a natural thing. Oh, yeah. Where there's fish tacos and there's and there's and there's good Mexican food, there were two sort of fish taco guys. But I will tell you this, I have driven around your house with the lights <laughs> off many nights, um, just creeping you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Wing Lamb from Wahoo's Fish Taco. Oh, Come on, so good. Yes. <laughs> and basically, let's face it, like, you know, it was it was either I'm going to make a fish taco and we buy myself a thing of Pringles and crack That's the window, right? right? How did the whole thing start? I have to find out. Like, how, like you were featured in Secret Millionaire in ABC. Yep. Um, you've been a Food Network all the time. I gotta say, yep. Burford Contessa is my jam. Um, <laughs> oh, it's not really. Sorry. <laughs> we love Ina. Um, I believe it's Ina. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no. Sorry. No. Um, I mean, you, you were in a National Merrill Lynch commercial. Yep. How did the whole thing start? W was this something like you set out to do? I'm gonna make the best fish taco, or like, hey, bro, what time is it? 25 or 6 to 4. Let's make a fish taco. I mean, how did it happen? By the way, that was a uh, reference to the Chicago song. You, you know, we, we, we do have a pretty, you know, a former heavy guy here. I can tell you, Paul over there, you know, can tell you the real story. There's only two ways to get into the action sports space okay. back in the day. Mm -hmm. You had to have been a former aspiring pro or a pro or best friends with one. Yeah, or smoke your way into it. Uh, I understand. That was good. Otherwise, good luck trying to get in. Everybody says it's the coolest job on the planet, but you got to be cool to be in the coolest guys club. Yeah. So did Action Sports and Don Durbin of Planet X and all those guys, oh, all those like, guys. Like, like, like play a role in this? <laughs> well, basically, the, the only component that everybody talked about when they went surfing, whether it's in Hawaii or Mexico, the two original destinations for a surfer mm -hmm. was the plate lunches you got either in Hawaii right, yeah. or the oh. fish tacos you got in Mexico. Or like Mike got in prison. So yes. it's a whole different there thing. You go. Yeah. Um, so here's my question for you. Yeah. Was there was there like a, a, an inception point where you said, here's the dealio. Yes. I'm going to open up. Because how many times is, uh, come on, let's face yeah. it. Let's open a bar named Sully's. Oh my God. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Let's we'll open a bar and call it Sully's. Yeah. 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 Sully's. Exactly. Right? You know it would work. Everybody thinks they have a book in them. Everybody thinks they have a restaurant in them. You know? Imagine the guy at Applebee's. Who knew? Who knew? Right? Exactly. But when you, when you, did you go out to make a fish taco and say, here's what I'm going to do? So, so it was at inception. Yeah. So basically, my kid brother, Ed, and I were basically, he was getting ready to get out of college. I was already out for a couple of years. And I said, hey, hate to tell you, corporate America is not as much fun as it looks. No. You know, so I said, hey, what are we going to do? And what do we know how to do? I mean, basically, in our sleep, mm -hmm. we can make food. Because my parents had restaurants all over the world. Said, hey, well, what are we going to do? Do we want to do what they're doing or do we want to do something that we want to do? And we, everybody talked about having a place to hang out after surfing. Right. So I said, well, let's create this little place and see what happens. So what's interesting is that a lot of people will say, if you have the passion and the yeah. desire, you're going to be successful. 
Yeah. I disagree. That's a, that's an American Idol uh, audition. Yeah. yeah. I know I should be a star. <laughs> a whole new like seriously, that guy has no talent, but he's got all the passion. You had to have the talent though too. Where did yeah. that come from? Well, working with my parents, you know, restaurants for all the years that I did. So I basically paid our due as a kid. But more important, most restaurateurs have a culinary degree as opposed to a business degree. Mm -hmm. Where most guys in the industry basically say, hey, we should open a restaurant because I know how to make good food. I said, well, I want to open a restaurant where I can hang out and make it idiot-proof food. Because basically, when you grill stuff... So Mike can't go there. Mike. Yeah. Mike. <laughs> Just checking. How many iterations of the... Fish taco, did you go through before you went, okay, that's what we want to put our name on? We just went and did it. Really? <laughs> so my question for you is, when you start off with a menu, I've yep. always wondered this about restaurant tours, yeah. um, because there's, I always appreciate the places that are, um, uh, they're focused on their menu, yeah. for example, like your menu, right? Sure. But there's also guys like, you know, A Burger, that yeah. has a pastrami sandwich, a grilled cheese sandwich, and a, uh, and a, and a halibut uh, just raw halibut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what, what? How do you know when to cut off? Look, we're just gonna do one thing right. Maybe we'll throw in a quesadilla. Yeah. Maybe some churros for the fat guy named yeah. Mike. But, uh, but what, like, how was that? Was that a meeting on that? Did you say, look, we need like these three things, or was it? Does it develop over time? No, literally, what we started out with, uh, we've only added, we've you know, two. But we basically, said, what do we like? No. We like chicken. We like pork. We like steak. We like fish. Let's start with that. And if you could have got the liquor license, you would have tequila from the very first day. That's Let's face right, it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I find it interesting that success, okay, and you talk to successful people, yeah. and um, and oftentimes success comes with a number, yep. wealth. But isn't it interesting that on Tuesday, you're a broke ass. Yeah. Wednesday, you're the same guy, and there was a number there. <laughs> isn't that interesting how business goes that way? Yeah. Like, when you talk about small businesses, like truly, I mean, I think people strive for success, but it's someday you realize, like, sweet mother of ass, we made it. But you're not really a different person. Did, did your success change you at all? No, I'm still the same guy. That's what a lot of people really, you know, in the industry anyway, they crack up because there'll be a snowboard contest, and there I am in the middle of the mountain, somewhere in the country. Still driving a forerunner. You're still driving a forerunner. <laughs> could, could have had a Tesla years ago. <laughs> You're the, I think you're a walking, talking epitome yeah. of not only paying it forward, but also giving back. Yep. Uh, the t-shirt you're wearing, California Love Drop, yep. what's that all about? Well, when the pandemic hit, literally overnight from Wednesday to Friday, we lost 85% of our business. So a store that had 20 employees by Friday had three. So basically we said, we got to figure it out because nobody's coming to us. Let's go back to finding them. Literally, it was almost turning the clock back 35 years. How tough was that, though? You know, it, 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 listen, I, I love to beat up uh, politicians <laughs> during COVID. But yeah. truthfully, you didn't know what you didn't know, yeah. right? Yeah. That time when you got to open for one day yep. and restock your store, and I would argue that the number one line item cost is either uh, human capital or food yep. in a restaurant, right? Yep. And you had to stock everything up. As, and I would say when you reopen a restaurant, it's like starting a new restaurant every time other than the furniture, fixtures, and everything else. Like, how do you, like, navigate through that stuff? Or do you just ignore the bloviating guys up on top and say, we're going to do what's best for us? we got to survive. So yeah. whatever anybody's telling you what not to do, I said, well, let's figure out what we can do. Because yeah. San Diego and L.A. were probably the toughest. Orange County was kind of this... I call it Florida-like state of mind, mm -hmm. where everybody said, what are you talking about? There's Orange no County's the Liberace of California. Yeah, yes, you know? yes, there you go. He's kind of popular, <laughs> but he's like a little weird and has a pinky ring. Yes. Um, did you find any resistance as you went east? Absolutely. No Everywhere kidding. we went. I've always wanted to ask that. People always say, fish, taco, what is that? Yeah. They couldn't get it past because they kept thinking a, a trout or a fish stick inside of it. The, the whole yeah. concept was just very, very foreign to them. And then once you started breaking down, goes, you ever had chicken on top of your salad? Yeah. Like, yeah. Have you ever had fish or steak? Oh, yeah. Goes, now just put a tortilla at the bottom of it. Do you know yeah. what Mike has? Mike has a, a taco inside a burrito inside of a, a bell beefer. And it's, called a, <laughs> it's called a chalupa. And yeah. it's his favorite food. Wrapped in a pizza. <laughs> um, can, can I, 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 one last thing that I want to ask you. Yeah. Um, look, it, I've interviewed everyone from Steve Jobs yep. to Larry Ellison to Steve Forbes. Yep. And all of you people... <laughs> have this sort of imposter syndrome like how the hell did i get here do you ever ask yourself was it because it's pretty tough to be prescriptive about success yes but do you ever ask yourself like like i, I got somebody sprinkled pixie dust on me because i'm here now that's that's all i do is like and i literally 
I credit almost 99% of our existence in the surf industry mm -hmm. to a guy named Mike Lesher that was basically Paul's counterpart at Billabong, who basically every time I went to him and said, hey, I got this idea, he says, yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. So imagine having one of the top brands in the world always saying yes to your crazy ideas. Oh, right. And that literally opened the door because with you know Mike's ability to open the doors for me, it basically forced all the other action sports brands to say, well, if Billabong is doing it, we got to do or it. Or take it away from you. Wing, will you come back with us and hang out? That's <laughs> Wing Lam, CEO of Wahoo's Fish Tacos. Fantastic story. So glad I got so to it. And the uh, Aquadolls, you're going to take us out. Do you remember the song? What the song is from? It's not from Honk, Five Summer Story, mister. Endless Summer. Endless Summer, that's right. This is awesome. Oh, I love this music. <laughs>